Hello and welcome to BioVids. In this series, I cover the lives of important or interesting figures in history, examine what made them what they were, and discover their true impact on history. Though at the time a part of France, in the city of Nice, a boy would be born to the Garibaldi family who would be important in not French history, but Italian history. Giuseppe was his name, and he would later come to be known as one of the four fathers of the fatherland, the men who would champion Italian unification. Of these four men, Giuseppe is the most infamous and respected. He would even be called the only wholly admirable figure in modern history by historian A.J.P. Taylor. Though born in France, Giuseppe was ethnically Italian, and following the Treaty of Vienna, his home city would once again be part of an Italian nation. Note, an Italian nation, rather than the Italian nation. This was because, at the time, Italy was still a patchwork of independent states. The state which Garibaldi came from was Sardinia Piedmont, a union of northwestern Italian regions of Piedmont, Milan, and others with the Mediterranean island of Sardinia under the Sardinian monarchy. In the spring of 1833, the merchant vessel Clorinda leaves the harbor. On it, a shipment of oranges and a young, ambitious captain named Giuseppe Garibaldi. The journey leads the ship across the Mediterranean and through the Black Sea to the Russian port of Taganrog. While in port, Giuseppe meets another Italian, an immigrant named Giovanni, who spins him a tale of a secret movement known as Young Italy, led by another man named Giuseppe, specifically Giuseppe Mazzini. Leaving the Russian city, Garibaldi has a new purpose in life, one which he was determined to begin work on almost immediately. Not long after, he meets Mazzini in Genoa to help organize an insurrection. This quickly goes wrong as the insurrection gets crushed and Giuseppe is sentenced to death. While his life is figuratively going south, Giuseppe is literally going west, escaping to France to get away from his sentence. Wanting to get as far away from his beloved Italy as possible, Giuseppe quickly makes his way across the Mediterranean to the sweltering foreign lands of Tunis in Africa, and from there to Brazil. While in Brazil, he meets his future wife, Anita, with whom he quickly gets eloped. He also participates in a number of revolts, revolutions, and uprisings, all of which failed. Despite this, he kept his stalwart and dedicated revolutionary spirit, though he did move to Uruguay to work as a teacher, attempting to settle down. Revolution would call again, however, when the Uruguayan Civil War broke out between the more conservative Blancos and the more liberal Colorados. Giuseppe led the Coloradan fleet and the Italian Legion, more commonly known as the Red Shirts, a division of volunteers dedicating to help the Coloradan cause. He would not be in Uruguay to see the end of the war, however, though his Colorados would eventually win, partially thanks to his multiple victories achieved by his clever use of guerrilla tactics. The reason for this is because in the year of 1848, Europe was in turmoil as a number of political revolutions were occurring across the continent. Italy was not immune to this, seeing his opportunity to perhaps assist in the unification of Italy, Giuseppe left South America back to his birthplace. He fought in the unsuccessful Italian War of Independence, and would later, under Mazzini's request, help defend the newly declared Republic of Rome that had overthrown the theocratic Papal States. In the subsequent siege of Rome, Garibaldi decided to retreat with his men, facing overwhelming odds. Forces from all across Europe hunted down Garibaldi and his men as they retreated. Numerous desertions occurred, and Garibaldi's force of 4,000 dwindled down to a mere 250. Even his own wife, Anita, died in the retreat. Defeated once more, 
Garibaldi fled to the New World again, this time to North America, where he worked as a merchant just as he would had done when he was younger, for five long years before finally returning to Italy after things had died down. By now, a unified Italy was becoming a more popular idea, and the nation of Sardinia Piedmont were hoping to be the unifiers. Garibaldi assisted in the Second War of Italian Independence, which was this time successful and saw Lombardy under Sardinian control. It was not long after that that Garibaldi would contribute his greatest effort to Italian unification, the Expedition of the Thousand, where he led around 800 soldiers to Sicily in an attempt to overthrow the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies and unite it with the Kingdom of Sardinia Piedmont. He was successful crushing the enemy force, in part due to a large amount of corruption that had plagued the aristocratic kingdom. With that, he declared himself temporary dictator of Sicily, and then annihilated the armies of the remainder of the kingdom of the two Sicilies, and claiming all of southern Italy in the name of Victor Emmanuel II, King of Sardinia. Though parts of Italy were still controlled by the Pope and Austria, what was controlled by Sardinia now found enough legitimacy to declare itself a united kingdom of Italy, and Victor Emmanuel went from being mere king of Sardinia to king of Italy. Garibaldi would continue assisting in further wars, but his goal had been achieved. A united Italy. In the year of 1882, Garibaldi would die peacefully, a national hero. Giuseppe Garibaldi was the definition of a revolutionary. He chased progress and shunned the status quo, for better or for worse. He was without a doubt a flawed man himself, prone to overexcitement, and so determined to achieve his version of progress that he would often refuse compromise. But more than that, he was a hero. A hero of the old world and the new. Thank you for watching. This was episode two of BioVids.